Okay, thank you for being here. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Carsten Toller, and I'm presenting on behalf of David Wolf as well, who's sitting there in the second row. Um, we are also talking about those uh, coffee cup uh, with the five stars. Um, we have some experience from moving existing databases to this level to some extent. And for this session, we concentrate on the social technical challenges we expected and we encountered. And maybe to start with a little overview where we're coming from, when we started the whole process, and what does it mean for the revolution. Um, we can go far back in time. So David already started with some of his colleagues who was, uh, who was uh, from the archaeology point of view, a numismatist. So a very specific discipline. And they started back in, in 1985 trying to standardize their databases, which at that point was a challenge. There was not even SQL, which came in 92. Um, so they tried, but the technology was not ready yet. Um, then time passed, and uh, then somewhere in, in 2007, David and I met, and uh, we picked up uh, that idea again. We started a small project, in, which was finished in 2008, which was a kind of prototype where we took a numismatic database from Netherlands, and a numismatic database from Austria and from Germany, and we used ontologies to build them together. At that point in time, there was not much we could build on. So there, we need to generate our own ontology. We had our own thesaurus to set up, and then we put stuff together. <laughs> but the good thing, it worked. Then, for example, in about 2009, there was nuts coming up with Ethan involved, I think, um, which is uh, XML-based um, XSD thing. And then in 2010, 2011, the things got a little bit closer. So there was uh, a place called nomisma.org for the numismatic people. So um, a web address where the concepts that are relevant for numismatists are specified and fixed with permanent IDs, URIs, so you can link to them. We generated them for our own leads. Um, a database <coughs> which is in the back end based on a relational database, so there is MySQL in, in the back end. But uh, we will see that how, how we use the relational database to link to numisma.org and other things. And there's a European coin find network, which is here, you hardly can read it probably, ECFN, where we also have a group of numismatists that work together. They're interested in the subject and they want to collaborate. So that's a timeline and background. <clears throat> and in our experience, what we discovered, what are the main challenges in really getting the people to move forward to join the revolution? It's uh, the people are scared. They don't know anything about computer science. They don't know anything about linked up data. It's getting better, of course, over time. But they're scared and they especially don't want to change their habits. Trying to change habits, it's always a pain. <clears throat> and you need, need some good reason to do that. Um, the second thing is, um, in computer science, there are two different saints. One is never change a running system. And the second is, um, if you have a project and nothing is changed over time, the project is dead. So they're a little bit contradictory. But uh, for archaeologists, it's always a problem. I need to change my system. Does everything work afterwards? I'm not sure. So that's a problem. I think those two we kind of can deal with. And there's a bunch of other things that are more complicated, at least for me as a computer scientist. I'm not a lawyer, so I cannot tell much about licenses, uh, which is quite complicated. And I'm out of that. Security issue is a very specific subject in computer, computer science. I'm also not an expert on that. But once you put your data online, it's online. If you don't want to have it online, you need to put it somewhere else. Um, loss of control and power, this is all. something we can work on. Because in, in my idea, if you put your data online, you get more visibility 
in fact, you get more power. So this is something we can start discussion on that. Reduction of hits is something we also hear. If you put your data somewhere, you make a dump and somebody put it somewhere else, you just go there. But the main, many systems like Ochre, for example, you not just go there, you also, the images got loaded from, from the server of the original places. So they get the hits. Uh, of course, there's a price for setting up linked open data. If you need to change something, you need some experts, some IT people that are that cheap. Um, and sustainable, you, you already mentioned, if, if Gazetteers got, Pleiades got shut down, then it's gone. Um, but since things are open, you, most of the systems you make can make a dump, you have it somewhere else, somebody else can take it over. So there is, uh, there is something. But Nobody knows what happens in five, ten years. I mean, a few years ago, XML was the lingua franca and does everything, and we are interoperable, we have XML. Mm -hmm. and that was not true. The expert knew that, but it's an exchange format, basically. Okay, that's, uh, I skipped that. You can rhyme time reason, but this is, uh, this is a great slide for um, showing it to archaeologists to get them to understand what we are what this is, and saying you're one star, two star, three star, five star, and then they get a gleam in the eye and say, oh, I want to have five stars, let's go for it. <laughs> so it's motivating, so it's an important slide, even though we all know and, and we all have seen that. Um, some words on, on Nomisma. Um, it's um, the American Numismatic Society is behind, um, the Romish Germanic Commission is behind, me, myself, is behind, the British Museum is behind, so there are some institutions already behind pushing it. From the American Numismatic Society, there's also some money behind, which is a great part. Um, and, and the rest are doing it because we think it's good and we like it. Um, and you barely can read, there are some people over there uh, related to it. And as you can see, they're also connected with Pleiades and, uh, and other things. <coughs> Um, okay, now let's say you have a relational database and you want to now move forward to gain those stars, one star, two, four, four, five stars. <clears throat> what we normally, or what, what we did is we start with zero star. We don't publish our data, but we make use of the existing open data that is out there. So the Tesaurus, <laughs> etc. For example, if somebody enters something that exists, Badianus, then automatically there is a little link appearing <coughs> and the people who entered can just click on it and it would be sent directly to numisma.org specifying this is the emperor that is behind. You get there a, a link to VF so it can really be ensured this is the person uh, you intended to mean to enter for this coin. Um, yeah, that's the link. How does it look like in the relational database? Basically, you add an attribute, and you put the mapping in there. You say, this is, this is the ID in our relational database, this is the key, and this is the link to the outside. So adding an attribute is not much work. It will not destroy your system. You could even put it into an extra table if you're scared. So <laughs> it's safe, and you have the link to the outside. But you the good thing about that is if there is something you have in your system that doesn't exist somewhere, you can keep it. No problem. You don't have the link because it doesn't exist outside of your system, but, but it's there. So everything is fine. Um, well, what, what then we do? We say, OK, this is your relation database. You have this mapping included, which is safe. And then you just put a mapping a description how you want to take your tables, your attributes, and how you want to make linked open data, so RDF out of that. You choose one of these existing systems. We use a D2R server <coughs> that is then taking this mapping, wrapping the data from, from the relational database, and you have a Sparkle endpoint. And that's, that's how it looks like in, in D2R. If you have it 
running. This is a landing page which is human readable, but there's also the Sparkle endpoint, but it's more for computer usage. And you see here the link then for this coin, which is more for the people to read it with maybe more data included that is not part of the mapping. So you're free also to choose what should be go online, what should go into your linked open data, <coughs> what is just readable for humans, what is maybe just readable if you log into the system, you get more details and so forth. Okay, for <coughs> I'm good in time. Uh, what we see here is, for example, another link uh, to the outside here to Ochre. So, in Numisma, you have coins. Each coin <coughs> has a coin type, and there are catalogs where they list all the different coin types that exist from the Roman imperial coinage, for example. And you get here all the information that exists in Ochre for this coin, which gives you the chance also to compare is what I entered here in my database really correspondence to what exists in Ochre. So this gives, <coughs> this linked link operator gives you a opportunity to check the data quality of what you have in your database. So what we saw is uh, this RFA in, in, in Germany, but we have exactly the same system running in Poland, in Warsaw, which is uh, quite nice. Um, of course, the, the requirements of the two systems are different. So there are some attributes uh, for the Polish that are relevant, there are some, some attributes for Germany that are relevant, but not in the other system. But this we handle on the front end side. So the database behind in the schema is identical. So they are interoperable. They are interoperable even without li open linked data because they have the same schema. So that's easy. But uh, what, what we spare is we, we don't need to have separate mappings. We can just use the same mapping uh, in spare time. And then we have uh, the same Sparkle interfaces. And if you go into some coding and, for example, use a Jena API, you can define your queries. Here you ask for some best yarn. And you just have the same query, just with two different hardly to read with snowflakes, two different endpoints, you would get the results. It's working. Yeah. So it's, in that sense, it's interoperable. Um, so how would I define the methodology to come to those five stars and what we, what we did to put in methodology? The very first and important step would be to clean up your system. This is something you should do anyway. And I have one slide on that with some examples, um, which is this one. So if you have a diameter, you should have it, the information as granular, as uh, atomar as you, as you can put it. Computer science called first normal form of that. So this is important. Um, I've seen various, various databases. Some are perfectly OK. For example, in Austria, there are quite well on that, and I've seen complete opposite. So this is, before you do anything, you have to do this. This is important. Otherwise, the mapping and everything else gets too complicated. If you then need to change something, you're in real trouble. Mm -hmm. Second step I would propose would be this zero star level. So you include your mapping, you gain the benefit out of existing data, that you use it, you get some experience also, um, <coughs> but you don't really invest something. And then there's a third point. The third point is, is important because, well, putting data online, you need to know who gonna use this data and what they expect from you to how it's modeled. I have some slides on that. And, and if that is defined, then the rest is rather easy because then you just uh, need to find somebody who's doing this mapping description <laughs> and then put it on, onto your database and it can, can go online. So point three is, I think, the most critical one. Um, we need 
all probably to work on. <laughs> so there's one issue, for example, the people using different different ontologies. Okay, we, we heard there are different gasoteers and depending on what you use, that's a problem. But there are, in most cases, there are already some links between those. And we have like uh, same as properties inverse of or something or SCOS which gives a broad tool set of, of really linking those things. So this is not the main problem. The main problem is how to really use this stuff. Yeah. For example here um, we like in programming we divide between event-based object-oriented and there are a bunch of more. Uh, if you go to Wikipedia it's a near endless list. Um, here, for example, we see how one could uh, specify that something with Cydox VR, roughly. Um, so this is an event, this is the event of the production, and this is how it's product produced, and this is what it's produced. So the coin was produced in this event, and, and so on. Um, if you compare this with uh, another approach where you just say, this is a coin, and this is manufactured in this way, Exactly on this thing, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe on the on the other screens it's better readable. Um, it's much more simple. That that doesn't mean that I would prefer this one. Yeah, because if you have more information about the production event itself, you can just hook it here. You have a much more better structure. So I'm not saying this you shouldn't do, because it's more complex, and you should this one, but. You should use something that is, can be understood by the archaeologist or numismatist you're working for, kind of. If he understands what you're doing, it's much more easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you need to talk to him to understand how far is he, what can you do with him, and then and then you can decide what what is the best way to model it. And of course. Um, what is the community behind what they are knowing? What is the, the habits there? If they did it for 20 years that way, you, you will not change it in one step. You need at least a few. So if you bring them to this step, it's already great. And if you bring them then to the event-based something or whatever comes up, it's even better. And then I'm even right in time, right? Yeah, very good. Great. Thank you.